Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for this ArcGIS Online updates and smart mapping webinar. I've got a lot of great information to share with you. So my name is Haley Conley and I work at Esri Canada in the Education and Research Department, primarily responsible for creating educational resources and showing teachers and students how to use GIS in their learning. So we're going to look at some of the powerful tools and templates available to you through your ArcGIS Online account. ArcGIS Online is updated several times a year. These changes happen automatically, so you never need to worry about being behind in a version of ArcGIS Online. Esri has been busy creating new and exciting ways for you to use GIS in your teaching and learning. If you logged into your account this summer, you may have noticed some changes to several aspects of the site, including the items details page of your various maps and layers, new story map templates, and an apps button at the top of the page directly beside your name. We'll view all of these changes shortly. Smart mapping was introduced into the ArcGIS Online Symbology options in March of 2015. This capability allows you to tell better stories and create more attractive maps and apps by configuring the symbology of your data. When you first add data into ArcGIS Online, you'll be presented with a series of different options about how you can symbolize your data. Proportional symbols, color ramps, heat maps, and categorical mapping are all available to you in an easy to read and logical list so you can decide how you'd like your data to appear. These options can be found and changed at any time by clicking on the three little blue dots beside the title of your layer and then change style. So let's take a look at how this all works. This is the items details page with the layer I have in ArcGIS Online showing all of the different neighborhoods in Toronto. You may notice it looks a little bit different than it did at the end of last school year. You can edit any of the text, including the title, the summary, or the description by clicking on the edit or pencil button and typing in your words. And then just choosing save. There are also some new tabs available. The data tab allows you to explore the table behind your data. This is a neat feature to examine a data set and what variables it has before you add it to your map. You can see a list of fields, toggle the fields on and off, and sort values in ascending or descending order. In this example, I can see that I have a total population field and an area in square kilometers field. Finally, visualization me, tab allows you to interact with your data. You can change the symbology, apply filters, and decide if you'd like to use it on a map. Let's change the symbology to show population density. Smart mapping allows you to symbolize by two variables at the same time. The default symbology is just showing the location, but we're able to change this. Let's do total population and add an attribute of area and square kilometers. It just thinks for a moment. And you can see that smart mapping has done its magic. We have two different symbols going on. The darker symbol represents a larger population and a larger circle represents a larger area. Please note that these changes are only temporary. Once you switch tabs and go back, the changes you made are gone. You can save the symbology permanently by adding this data set to a map and applying the symbology there. The usage tab shows how many views this data set has had. And the settings tab allows you to enable delete protection, which is a handy feature, especially when you're working with students. Delete an item or enable editing which is handy if you're planning on using this layer with the collector or geoform applications. Next, I'm just going to open a new map and work with some different data. I have a CSV file of volcanoes around the world. These are the different fields that are contained in it. To add this data to my map, I simply need to drag and drop the CSV file from where it's saved on my computer directly on top of the map. By default, it's just showing that biology location, but let's use smart mapping and make this more meaningful. Let's symbolize by two fields again, length of the volcano explosion and the severity. It just thinks for a moment. And similar to the Toronto neighborhoods, it's created some smart mapping. Another cool feature is heat maps. 
to show areas of the world that have more volcanoes. There we go. Symbology, which would traditionally take a long time to create in our desktop software, can now be done in a few simple clicks. I'm going to save this map because I'd like to create a story map out of it. So I'll enter my title and a tag and click save. Once it's saved, I can look at some of the new story map templates which were recently released by clicking on share and create a web app. This is a list of all of the web application excuse me, templates that are available in ArcGIS Online, but let's just filter them by story maps. The two I want to bring to your attention are the Cascade and Crowdsource story maps. Although these are still in beta, which means that they're still being developed based on user feedback, you can still use the templates to create powerful story maps. I have an example of each one. This is an example of the Cascade story map, which functions like a long web page where you continuously scroll down to view content. It works well for stories with high quality pictures and of course, lots of maps. The Cascade story map takes you into maps immersively, which allows it to fill up your whole screen and move around to different places. Another new template is the Crowdsource app which allows users to add a point onto a map, upload a picture, and answer a few simple questions. Responses are filtered out on the right-hand side as you zoom into the map, and you're able to click on any submission to read what the person wrote. Finally, I'd like to show the new Apps button in ArcGIS Online. It's right up here directly beside your name when you're logged into your account. This provides quick access to some of the external apps and websites which are companions to ArcGIS Online. Most applicable educators is the Story Maps website. This will open in a new tab and allow you to see a list of the Story Maps in your ArcGIS Online account. You can view information about the number of sections and maps in each Story Map. For example, this one has five sections and one map and check for any errors. I can see that this story map has no errors. An example of an error would be a picture, a map, or a website that's no longer in existence or is inaccessible. If I scroll down through my list and choose this story map, it will analyze it and tell me that I have an error on point number 18 that this picture no longer exists. So I should go back and edit that. There are many tools available to you to bring your teaching to life with GIS. This was just a brief look and we're here to help you at any time. This was a really brief look at some of the functionality of smart mapping and some of the new templates in ArcGIS Align, but does anybody have any questions about anything that I went over? If you do, this is my personal email address, so feel free to email me at any time. And thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned something new. Enjoy the rest of your week and happy mapping.